Hi everyone! Welcome back to another video for the Homemade Smashbook series. Today is going to be about pages. Um, I'm going to make the pocket pages and we'll see what else I can fit inside this little video. Um, I have already pre-done most of my pages. Only because they're so simple, I don't have to sit here and do all of them with you. So I did leave um, two sets of pages to put together to show you how I do it. And it's like I said, super, super simple. All of your pages, if you want the size of book that I'm doing, <clears throat> sorry, um, are going to be five and a quarter in width and they're going to be eight inches high. So all you'll do is cut all of your papers that you're going to be using to five and a quarter by eight. And then um, whatever ones you want to adhere back to back, you just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to show you how I do mine. Um, super simple. If you are using double-sided papers or if you're using thick one-sided cardstock papers, you don't necessarily have to glue back to back. This is very thin paper, like I showed in the very beginning. Um, it's kind of maybe just a tad bit thicker than a copy paper. So that is why I am doing mine back to back. And um, being a single sided, I do like that I can have the patterns on both sides if I want. Or I'm going to flip through these pages real quick and show you that I have used some graph papers and things like that. So this is the calendar that I print out to use as um, generally my first page in the Smashbooks that I give away. Um, I do have a link to this in the supply list video. And so this will actually print out um, on an 8.5 by 11 sheet and you just cut it down. And then I started adhering the papers. So I'm just going to flip through them really quick. And then here I have, oh, that got stuck, some tape hung over, um, a piece of graph paper, and then some more lined paper. Um, I'm going to make a pocket page for this, so I kind of have little notes in here, but then I have a coin envelope that I'm going to put here when I do my blinding, and um, we're going to make one of these. So that's how that looks. Um, some more paper. And then I did print off, and I have the link to this one also in the supply list um, video. This, it's kids writing paper. You can adjust the sizes of your lines. I believe this one is about a half an inch. Yeah, I did a half an inch just to get um, more lines on here for the girls to write. So I just printed it out on an 8.5 by 11 this way, so it was an 11 by 8.5, and, and then I just cut it. So there's just a little border on each side, but it makes a cute double layout, I think. So then I just kept going with the papers. Another graph paper piece. And then more notes for my coin envelope and my other pocket page there. And then I did, oh, I had that backwards, another um, writing paper, and then this. So I'm going to show you how I just adhere these sheets together. And like I said, this is going to be super simple. Um, scissors come in handy for this part, unless you cut your papers slightly bigger, adhere them together, and then cut them down. Um, to the exact size, but I don't like doing that, so I'll show you how I do it. <laughs> um, I use ATG tape for this, so you can use um, a tape runner if you want, score tape, whatever you want to use to adhere these together. So I'm just going to go along all four sides. And then I'm going to put a strip right down the middle, just so I know that the middle is not going to really go anywhere. And then I'm going to take my graph paper, and I'm just going to line it up with the top. 
Sometimes this gets kind of tricky because I don't want it to completely stick down all the way yet. So I'm going to line it up with the top and then just kind of smooth it out. This one went on pretty well. So I don't really have to trim anything, just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little bit of it hanging over and me, that would totally bother. Um, I'm sure, and I have a little piece of adhesive sticking out right there. Um, I'm sure the little girl that I'm giving this to probably won't even notice it, but that's just me. <laughs> I know it's there. So I'm just gonna cut it off. I'm gonna show you how small this is really hanging over, but I'm kind of anal. <laughs> that is small, just a little sliver. So that page is done. I'm gonna do the last one and then all of my pages will be completed. So I'm gonna do these two. And then I will show you how to do the coin envelope. It's going to be very super simple also. So same thing, all four sides. And then right down the middle. And can adhere this one. Same way, I'm just going to line it up and then smooth it out. And this one did not go on as great. Or it's just not, there's two spots that I'm going to have to trim off of this one. So I'm going to trim this side. If I can see it. There we go. This part's kind of sticking because it's the part with the tape on it. Okay, so there's another little piece. And I'm going to flip it over because I have another hangover on this side. Like I said, if you want to cut your papers an eighth of an inch or so bigger and then trim them down after you adhere them, if that's easier for you, um, this, I don't mind just trimming off all this little stuff. It's not a big deal to me. So that is my last page. So all my papers are done. And in the order that I want them. So now I'm going to show you how to do the coin envelope and this is the paper I picked to cover this one so grab your trimmer and we're going to trim this is six inches so we're going to trim this down to five and a quarter and then we're just going to slice off this end here and toss that then your paper to cover this, um, I do both sides like I showed you in the other one and um, I'm not going to put any adhesive inside here because this is where I'm going to bind it into the book so anything you put in there is not going to come out anyway. So the paper size for this is going to be, hold on let me grab it, you should know I've made so many, um, it's going to be 5 and 7 eighths. I know that, or not five and seven eighths, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, five and a quarter, no. Okay, cut to five and a quarter. Okay, so five and one eighth by three and one quarter. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, so this is my paper. I'm gonna cut my three and a quarter first. And I'm going to do that twice because I need two pieces. And 
And then I have these two pieces that I will cut to five and one eighth. Right here. And then I just have these leftover pieces. So move that. And then I'm going to attach these. Sorry if this gets really bright right here, but I'm in front of the window so I have decent lighting for you guys. And it keeps getting, it's kind of snowing a little bit. Um, we're only supposed to get maybe an inch. But the sun comes out and then it goes back behind the clouds. And then it comes out. So it's, I'm sorry if it gets light dark, light dark. <laughs> This tape roll is like got an attitude. Okay, so then I'm just going to adhere this on here. And then I'm going to take, which I forgot to grab, a one inch circle punch. Oops. And the best way that I have found to punch these little envelopes is to fold down this flap to get it out of your way. And press down my paper. So I'm going to hold it this way. And I'm going to take my punch, since I don't want the big end to go inside here, it's not gonna fit very well. I take the small end and this is kind of an eyeball thing. I don't go quite halfway down um, on the punch. It's got a halfway mark, but I don't go all the way halfway down. And I just kind of center it as best as I can and just punch. Just so there's a little notch. That way, um, you know, whatever they put in there, they'll be able to pull back out. And then there's the little flap. So I'm going to do this side, and it's going to be the same thing. Just adhering the paper right on top of the envelope. Now if you didn't want the envelope really showing, um, you could cut your paper to the same exact size and that would be fine. But I don't mind the little the little border of the envelope. So I'm just going to center this. I'm just going to take my bone folder and just rub over it. I have a habit of using my fingers and then I get all these little slices, these little paper cuts all over. So I have to try to remember to stop doing that. Okay, so now I'm going to find my little page. And this is going to go here, so I'm going to go ahead and take this little sticky note off. And now I'm going to show you how to make the pocket pages. Let me show you what I mean by pocket page. Um, this is mine. Um, I'm going to show you how to make this pocket right here. So it'll be full on one side and it'll be a pocket on this side. And I'm going to make two for this book. One will be this direction and then one will be the opposite direction. So we're going to go ahead and make both of those. And I might actually cover them. I'm not sure. We'll see how long this video takes. Um, so here's my two sheets, and this is just eight and a half by eleven inch cardstock. I do not believe I have cut this down yet, but let me measure just to make sure so I don't miss any steps. Okay, that's eight and a half by 11. Okay, I have not cut it yet, so we are going to make these together. Um, cutter again, or trimmer, whatever you want to call it. Move that. These are going to be cut down to 8 and 3 eighths by 10 and a half. So I'm going to have to pull out this little arm. I don't normally use this trimmer. This is this is Caleb's, but it's it's easier for the videos than I have a giant rotary cutter. Um, okay, so eight and three eighths. So you're gonna take your eight and a half and you're gonna cut it down to eight and three eighths. So one, two, three. So you're only cutting an eighth of an inch off of 
this. So just this teeny little strip from your eight and a half um, side. And you're gonna turn it and do 10 and a half. So 10 and a half right there. So you have a half inch from that side. So not a whole lot of waste there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this second one just to have it ready. Eight and three eighths. And 10 and a half. Make sure that's lined up there. And it was not. So we're done with the trimmer for that part. So now we're going to do some scoring. And I have my Martha Stewart scoreboard here. And we're going to score along the 10 and a half inch side. We're going to score at five and a quarter because that is the width of our pages. Then I'm going to turn it, and then I'm going to score it at eight, because that is the height of our pages. So let's do this one, five and a quarter, and I'm gonna turn it and do eight. I'm hoping you guys can see all this. Like I said, this lighting is crazy. Bright, dark, bright, dark. Okay. So now to get these to go the opposite directions, this is what you have to do. And I'm just going to cut these. So this, this is the middle score mark. And we're going to cut this bottom score mark all the way to the middle. So I'm just going to cut that really quick. All the way to the middle score mark. And then on this right side, I'm going to angle my cut and then I'm going to angle this side. This is going to be my flap that will be folded in to hold my pocket together. Now this side, where I cut this piece off, this side you're gonna measure up four inches. And where's my pencil? There it is. So I'm just gonna stick it right here on my mat. I'm gonna come over a line so I can see. So as you can see, it's eight inches tall. So I'm gonna go to my four and I'm just gonna put a little mark there because now I'm going to cut diagonally from this corner to this middle score line. And I'm just gonna use my X-Acto knife for this. You can get, you can put this in your trimmer and cut it that way if you'd like, but I'm just going to just trim it like this. So you just cut this little triangle piece off. So this is going to form our pocket. And you will use, um, I'm gonna need to use some score tape for this. Let me grab mine. And, um, cause it's gonna hold this bottom piece a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and fold on my score mark. And it should line up with this side since I basically scored it in half. I'm going to erase my little pencil mark there. So this is how we get the pocket. Just like that. So then this piece is your little bottom flap and we're going to fold it up and press it down and just put a little strip 
of score tape right along this middle part here. And then that forms our pocket page. So the second one, we're going to do just the opposite direction. So we're going to cut the right side instead of the left. And then we're going to angle this cut and angle this side. So there we go. And then this side, we're going to measure up four inches again. Only this time I'm going to have to count because I don't have the numbers on this side. So one, two, three, four. Put a little mark. Then we're going to go ahead and slice this one off. And there's that side. And again, just fold it over and it should line up with that side. Crease it really well. And then the bottom. And then score tape again. So super easy for these little pocket pages. And you're done. So this side will be bound into the book. So you'll see this side and it'll flip over and it'll be a pocket. This side will be bound into the book. So you'll see this side. So now I think we're just going to cover just the front flap on this. Um, I'm going to see if I can get some of this light to kind of not be blinding. Um, that's okay. It's kind of dark. Lift it up a little bit more. Okay, so um, in order to cover this, I'm just going to use some of the scrap pieces that I have left over. And I'm going to look through here and make sure that where I want it, I'm not going to repeat the pattern. So can't have the greens, but I think I'm going to put an orange on that side. So I think I'm going to do these orange ones. Um, I'm going to do the stripe and the flower for that one. And then, yeah, let me do that one first. That way I don't get too confused here. So we will do this one. So I'm gonna have um, my left side pocket for this page. So I'm gonna do the front flap and then I'm gonna do the back side. So since I have a flower page there, I'm gonna go ahead and do the stripe first. Now I know that my page is five and a quarter this way so I'm going to go ahead and cut this paper. I'm going to cut it, let me see, an eighth of an inch. Um, that's kind of my normal measurements for um, my little borders. So five and a quarter, I'm going to do five and one eighth.
And then I know this is eight inches, so I'm gonna do seven and seven eighths. And that's right there. Okay, now this part I don't measure because every time I do I screw it up. So what I do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to center it like I was almost covering this whole piece. Then I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to find where my pocket begins and I'm just gonna mark it about an eighth of an inch. And same over on this side. Let me get this part in the camera for you so that way I know you guys can see. Line it up, kind of like that. So you have your white border. So I put my pencil mark here and I'm gonna go to the corner and I'm going to put another pencil mark there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use my X-Acto knife again and my ruler. And I'm just gonna cut this piece off. So you just have that. And then this should fit, let's hope I did it right should fit right there on the front. So let's go ahead and adhere that down. And just using my ATG tape. All the way around. So definitely don't want this coming up. Just tuck that corner in. There is all the adhesive, and I'm just going to try to center this. And just press it down. So that, that's it, that's the cover um, for the pocket. So that way you can see that it's a pocket. And now I'm just gonna do the back. And the back is going to be same measurements, only we're not going to cut diagonally. We're going to leave it as a whole rectangular piece. So five and one eighth. And then seven and seven eighths up here. And then we're just going to adhere that to this back piece. like that. I'm just going to center this again. And press that down. So there we have our pocket page. Um, and then you're just going to go ahead and do the second one the same way. And just to save a little bit of time, um, I'm going to do this one off camera. And then I will show you guys how to cut the wire um, for all of the binding. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm done with all of my pages and my coin envelopes and my pocket pages. So I have them where I want them as far as um, where in the book. And I actually, because <laughs> I wasn't thinking right, I wasn't, I put the flowers on here instead of the stripes, but I think it'll be okay. 
So that's where I kind of want everything to be. And then you will go ahead and punch this. Um, I have a template that I made that I cut a piece of cardstock at five and a quarter by eight and lined it up with my bind it all so I know that my my two ends are going to be pretty even. And I have 16 holes across here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, this is three quarter inch O-wire, and I'm gonna cut 16, 16 loops, that way they all fit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is my, my 16th. I'm gonna cut this big loop right here, right in the middle. And then I always save these. I have a few of these little pieces. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are really nice to make little notebooks and stuff out of. So here are, here's my set of wires. So this is where I'm going to start building my book. Um, after I punch all of it we, um, using my template so I know that they're all going to be the same um, punched the same way because I can line this up with my bind it all. Um, I'm going to I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about here. Just in case you've never used a bind it all before. Now if you're using a cinch, which I know um, somebody did mention that they're going to use their cinch for the first time for this. I don't know how the cinch works. I just know how my bind it all works. So if there's a template that you can make with your cinch or whatever, it, it may be kind of similar. I don't know. Um, I'm going to I'm drop and stuff here. I'm going to punch about three pages because, like I said, these papers are kind of kind of thin. So I'm going to do three, and I'll do them on camera with you guys. I'm going to kind of turn it this way so you can see what I'm talking about. Over on this side of the bind it all there's this little guide thing. Well, there's this little black notch that's right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right here. That is where I'm going to be lining up my template. So I'm going to make sure that it's lined up with my pages and I'm going to stick it in here and I'm just going to line up the fourth one in sure it's lined up and doesn't move and then I'm going to go ahead and punch that so then I can take my template out and I have my starter holes so then I'm going to go ahead and move this over to where this last one is lined up with the first one but it will also line up with this little notch over here and I'm going to push that in and make sure that it goes right through that hole so these are completely lined up and then I'm just going to punch it again and I'm going to pop that out and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same exact thing this first one will line up here I'm going to stick it back inside my notch and punch again so then all of my pages are going to be perfectly lined up when I punch them so um, I'm going to punch all of my pages and then in the next video I will show you guys um, how to um, organize them on your ring and then we will do, let's see what is the next one that we're going to do. We're going to do, um, I will show you how to make the pouch and the bookmark. And then um, we'll see how long that video goes. And then we will get to the actual hinge part of the binding. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye.